It's hot. It's cool. Beautiful. I don't reckon it's even six foot four tall. Welcome to Singapore. In each episode of Buying Asia, we'll review every country or city, allowing you to decide whether to invest or not to invest. To do this, we'll look at taxes, currency, mortgages, rentability, saleability, and finally, whether it's even legal to purchase property as a foreigner. From swampy colonial outposts to economic powerhouse, Singapore has come a long way in a very short time. To say this place punches above its weight is the understatement of the year. With 36% of the population being foreigners, we've got a very eclectic culture here. But what I'm really interested in is this amazing economy that's absolutely booming at the moment. It seems like an unstoppable train. With Malaysia to the north and Indonesia to the south, Singapore has grown in leaps and bounds over the past decade. It's billed as having the best quality of life in Asia, and there are constant plans to improve on that, like the recent opening of new casinos and mega hotels there. Currently, it also has the fastest growing economy in the world. Here to talk to me about this are two experts in their fields. Okay, guys, so you've been here five years, is it? Uh, just over four years, actually, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. And you've been in Dubai, you've lived in Hong Kong. Dubai, Hong Kong, and this is uh, my latest destination. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, from your perspective, what's happening here? I mean, uh, you know, economically, well, uh, is it exciting? It's very exciting. I think uh, Singapore has really established itself as, as the hub of Asia, really. I think certainly from the financial sector's point of view. Um, we're seeing a lot of money moving from Hong Kong to Singapore because yep. it's not overseen by China. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, attractive options put here for people to come and live here. Yep. Um, there's no religious uh, issues here. I mean, all religions are, are treated fairly. It's a great area for, for children to be brought up from that point yep. of view. I mean, I've got young children here, and I mean, you can't hope for a better place to bring them up. Yeah. You know, they get a, a perception of every single religion, and they can decide what they want to do and what they don't want to do. Yeah, um, uh, I think mm. uh, I always. I think that Hong Kong is the place to get Chinese money into and for foreign money because, right. you know, I'm there. But it's interesting what you say. It's something like a lot of Japanese come into this market. They don't want to be under a watchful eye of China. Well, so it's that's their, their angle for Singapore, is it? I think for high net worth people, it's a confidence factor. I mean, it's a bit like Europe. You know, people talk about Monaco as, you know, a hub for money. But I think the high net worth Chinese have traditionally moved their money into Hong Kong. But they realize now that they haven't got that security that yeah. they really might like. And I mean, here we're seeing a trend now for for the high net worth people to bring the money here and reside here and uh, make they feel safer. Yeah. And they're buying, you know, stuff like the sale over there, we've got the, sale, the new marina. Uh, well, they've got the casino there if they want to have a little gamble as yeah. well, so I mean, that, that's attracting them over. And the nice thing is that there's no capital taxes here, so they're actually yeah. saying to people as well, you don't have to rely on trust law, you, you can pass your assets on without any issues, yeah. so, you know, you, you can plan for your future here. So. And you bought? Yes, I bought into a, into a longer term project. Yeah, okay. so um, you know I feel comfortable with it. The, the uh, currency is strong here. The currency is doing well, yeah. and uh, yeah, no, I, I, I see no reason not to make this a longer term, you know, home for myself really. Okay, Good. so you're in Sentosa, right? Uh, I'm, I'm bought in just near yeah, Sentosa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean that okay. that's again is a great development. You know, you've got all the uh, Warner Brothers, uh, you know, attractions there. Yeah. You've got the casino. You've got the golf courses. Great. And it's a great location for getting into this central business district. You know, five minutes drive and you're there. So it's fantastic. Perfect. Okay, Mark. So you lived in Japan for 15 years. Correct. You came to Singapore how long ago? Uh, about three years ago. Okay, so why the move? Why the move? Well, look around you. Yeah. We've got a casino nearly finished over here, that's Sands Casino. Behind here, that's where I work. I can walk five minutes to the casino at the end of this month. Yeah. And it's just a great environment for to work. It's a nice, uh, nice uh, temperature, always in the 30s. Yeah. It's a great place to bring up a family. I've got two little kids. Okay. Um, and Tokyo is really too polluted. Okay. I think this is the destination in Asia as a place to live and bring up a family. So in terms of you know what you do here and, and growing your business, you, you, I hear that you bring a lot of money in here, a lot of people what like to invest from all over the world. Japanese are bringing money. So it's just it's, it's, it's a great place to invest, right? People see this as a clean economy for them. I think people trust this place more than Hong Kong. 
Right. Certainly my client stresses more in Hong Kong. Probably because Hong Kong, China, very close together, or part of China now. This is seen as an independent country in Asia that has good regulations. Yeah. So they feel more safe. If they're going to put their money in Asia, this seems to be a destination that many, certainly Japanese, are looking to put their yeah. money in. Well, you tell me, I've got a lot of positives. I mean, maybe you ought to tell people who are watching this, it's a bit punchy now. Is it too expensive? I think Singapore is a great place to live. If you want to live in Asia, this is a place to live. Okay. So long term, I think it'll do very well. Short term, there may be another correction because the prices have gone up a bit too quickly, I think. Yeah. Um, it depends who you look at. If you look for a short term flip, then I think you need to be careful. You might get stung if there's a little bit of a correction in the market. But long term, things should keep it going up, I think. The Singapore Sling was first served in Raffles Hotel in 1915, and since then the population of Singapore has grown to 4.99 million people. Luckily, they all speak English, because I don't speak Malay, Mandarin, and I think my Hindi's even worse. But as always, I'm really in Singapore to learn more about the property market. This country may be the second most densely populated place in the world, but with plenty of greenery and Western-styled influences, not to mention the lack of pollution, it's become a real family-friendly city, which means more and more people are moving here and they need a place to live. The Singapore property market was very slow until about 2007, but it's been growing apace ever since. I'm here today at a hawker market to talk to Cecilia Chow, who's a property editor. She's going to tell me what's going on right now. My biggest worry is she makes me drink one of those horrible coffees that they drink down here. As it turns out, she whisks me away to one of the hot new areas in the city with plenty of developments. So no, what were you saying then about this place? Go on, so it's what's called Waterbank. Yeah. And it's overlooking the... Uh, the Geylang River. <laughs> so it's saying sea views. Yeah. The Geylang. Well, waterfront views. Waterfront views. You've got to love yeah. the developers marketing these things. So right next door, there's a um, Hobby, Hobby and NTC Choice Homes. I think they're going to complete their projects right next door. Right. It's going to T.O.P. in July. OK. But when does Waterbank T.O.P.? When's it to? 2014. 2014? Yep, yep. Mm. And what's the, what deposits are people putting down on these things? Okay, 5% of course, an option. 5%? Option. No, and after that, you have to pay about 20%, yeah, right. within the next, what, eight weeks, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's very so interesting. So that's really good yeah. So, and they sold how many, it's how many units in total? Um, more than 500 in the last two weekends. And yeah. they're still selling it now? Yeah. They put the prices up? Okay, now it's, yep. For the very small units, apparently, some of them have hit, like, 1,400 per square. Wow! <laughs> So the range is from 1,001 to about 1,000. No, no, there's 200 over flats available, and they sold 312 raffle tickets, <laughs> right? They got checks for 300 odd people, and they literally had to buy the unit on the morning. They had to do a ballot to see who gets the units. That's incredible. Yeah. And that's the appetite for Singapore property, right? It's still yeah. there. Kill me! Okay, put it away. The police are coming, no more. <laughs> so will I buy those properties? I'm not sure. You've got to be very careful with emotion and not jump in the gun when you buy residential real estate. I mean, people get so emotional about it. I know one thing, I need to eat some food. I'm going to meet Linda Churn. She's going to tell me about all things Singaporean. They love loads of stuff other than property. Hey Linda, how are you doing? Hi Tim, I'm good. Nice to see you again. It's not just property, is it, in this market? They all love their food. Look at it. It's absolutely packed. Yes. What is uh, it about these walker centres? I mean, why are people like sitting in the boiling hot having their lunch? Well, that's when we get our local food. You know, it's not all about restaurants. Most people like their local food in Singapore. And yeah. you can't get this kind of stuff in a fancy restaurant, right? You have to come here. No, definitely not. Yeah, you get your fishbowl noodles and your, your chicken what? rice. Fishbowl? Fishbowl noodles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Tell me, I mean, we, we talk to a lot of foreigners, we talk to them who live here, we talk to a lot of property investors. You're in property, but you know, forget property for a minute. I mean, what's going on in Singapore? It's changing for you or not? Is it still the same old Singapore it was 30 years ago, or is it changing? Well, uh, for the last 30 years, it's changed a lot. You know, previously, it was just a small little city with, um, where everybody traveled by bus, and that's about it. Now we have the trains, everybody drives. It's become very busy, yeah. like Bangkok, like Hong Kong. We get our jams, our traffic jams. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most people travel by train now. 
But there's no yeah. pollution now compared to 20, 30 years ago. So they got something right, yeah? yeah Massive well, taxes on the cars and all that, so they try yes, and reduce the traffic. Yes. And also, I think the government has done it right by planting a lot of trees along the roads. You know, that's what you don't see elsewhere in the big cities. Yeah. Yeah, in Singapore, you have it all, you know, all over the place. It's so green everywhere. So yeah. if you had to define a Singaporean, I know you can't stereotype people, right? We talk about it's been very multicultural. But if you had to define a Singaporean, they love their food. You know, what else defines a Singaporean? You know, I know that it's multicultural, but where's your identity? What is it about Singaporean that defines them differently? From the way we speak, oh, yeah, yeah. Singlish, okay, Singlish every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we end our, our sentences with la, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's predominantly how we speak. And um, everywhere you go, you recognize a Singaporean because yeah. they'll be after the food. If you see, <laughs> you see them at a buffet, they'll be first in line. Well, you know, I can't go more than three minutes without talking about property, and we talk about food, and that's enough about that. You know, we only have bangers and mash in England. But what's changing here in terms of, you know, are the Singaporeans keeping pace with the change of pricing? And, you know, things are expensive. I had a can of Coke yesterday for 12 bucks, right? Singapore dollars. Yeah. Which is absolutely ridiculous up on Orchard Road. Property prices escalating beyond control. That's right. Can Singaporeans still get in? Is it still friendly to the Singaporeans? Are there still deals for them? Well, I, I think the, the mass people are finding it hard to buy properties right now. That's why a lot of them are going back to HDB, which is yeah. uh, government housing, subsidized yeah. housing. Um, and even that has escalated beyond what some of us can pay. Yeah. 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 That's right. With okay. all, all this, um, you know, foreigners coming in. So it's getting in, more and more yeah. tricky, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I've worked out Wales define Singaporeans. They don't sweat. I mean, look at Linda. It's not a bead of sweat, and I'm sitting there sweating my backside. So I need to get in the car as soon as possible. And when Buying Asia returns, we go property shopping. More on Singapore's real estate potential. And you've got how many agents in total? We have more than 7,500 agents. So wow. Yes. And an introduction to the mysterious world of feng shui. This is the merlion, symbol of Singapore for strength, courage, resilience. Looks tiny to me. I don't reckon it's even six foot four tall. Currently in Singapore, foreigners can only buy apartments in the city, but not landed property. That changes in the ritzy area known as Sentosa, where 60% of the area is owned by foreigners. It's expensive, no matter what it seems. Occupancy rates across the city are currently sky high with high demand. And now I'm about to take you, you to the much. epicenter of where the sales are across the city. Hi Dennis, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good Thanks. to see you. Nice Good to, to see, see you. Singapore. Yes. What a great spot this is. Thank you. So what's this? Okay, this, this is basically a, a hot desk. It's meant for our agents. More than, more than 7,500 of them. They will be able to use this place as a hot desk wherever they need to make some calls, do some urgent, urgent uh, 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 write-up or whatsoever, and they touch and they go. Okay. Because their business are all outside. Right, and okay. the rest of the agents, basically, they will be able to go into their own respective places if they okay. want to have a more permanent place like their office or their desk. And you've got how many agents in total? We have more than 7,500 agents. So wow. Yes, in one entity. Yes. And they're selling Singapore property every day, every week? Every day, every week. Yeah, right. How yes. many? How many a month are you selling? We have more than 2,000 transactions every month. Wow. Yes. Is that, so you're the number one, right, in this market? Well, we are the number one real estate company in Singapore, yes. That's a massive level of transactions, right? People obviously love property in this market. What are they buying? What kind of things? What's popular? Okay, in the Singapore market has gone up a lot, particularly the last couple of years. Many, many due to the uh, populations have increased a lot in Singapore. We have, uh, is, for the last 18, month, 18 months, we have easily uh, more than 500,000 foreign talents that has been uh, getting their PR or citizenship in Singapore. Yeah. So that make up to the major growth. And on top of that, we are also a very uh, small little country that with uh, land that scar uh, scarcity. Yeah. So with this, we will be, the properties are always high, highly demanded. And the capital gain, capital gain is always better than most of the countries. Yes. So this is the key thing. So people watching this program who are foreign investors wanting to get in on this incredible story, right. they, can't, they can buy basically uh, freehold or lease sold apartments, they right. can't buy landed property unless if they it's are in a citizen, Sentosa. Unless they're citizens. Unless they're PR. Yes, no, unless okay. they're citizens. Okay. They must be citizens to buy land to buy okay. landed property. Okay. If they are PR, they can apply. 
they okay. can apply to buy a landed property for their own use, not okay. for investment. Okay, so big population growth, people with money, right. uh, small place, yes. not much property, right? Yes. So kind of pretty basic, but, but you know, yes. it makes yes. money. Yeah. What else What else is going on here that, that is interesting? Oh, we have two integrated resorts that we have uh, constructed and uh, one of it is already started in Santosa and one more is coming up in our new uh, CBD area, which is the Marina Bay okay. Financial Centre. Okay. So in, with these two new uh, integrated resorts that we have in Singapore, it's very likely to attract more tourists to come to Singapore and yeah. of course there are more jobs available. I don't have a PR, okay. um, so yeah, what kind of thing should I be looking at on my trip in terms of making an investment? Yeah. As I said, if it's long term investment at this present moment, you can buy anything but the good value will be in town, in the prime district because most of the prime district and the suburban, the gap is rather small at this present moment and it's still a, a, a good, uh, it's at good value and most of it is undervalued. Yeah. Yeah, and it's definitely, it's definitely undervalued at the moment if you're looking at the gap of a uh, so go and be specific. Which areas and which buildings should I? Orchard. Go to Orchard Road. Go okay. to go to Orchard Road. Go to Sentosa. Okay. These are the places. That Orchard Road go. and Sentosa. Yes, and they are very very. You good. got a couple of things you can show me today? Uh, I can I can show you anytime. While we look at specific properties in a moment, one of the more interesting concepts in Singapore has been created by the Housing and Development Board. Due to housing shortages in the early 1990s, the Singapore government set about creating several schemes. Among them, the Home Ownership for the People scheme and Build to Order Homes. With more than 80% of Singapore's population living in these flats, I set about finding more about them. I'm with Pamela Chu this morning. Pam, sorry, don't call you Pamela. Okay. Um, he's just got into, he's trying to get into the market. 26, quite difficult. Yep. Property prices at record levels now in Singapore. That's right. So HDB is too much money for you? Um, yes, it is because uh, you need cash on hand. And then we've just started working at 26 and we are saving up for marriage right now. So it's pretty hard for us. That's why we chose our um, build to order. Built to order. So I don't know what that is. I've not heard of that before. So I just think that people have been talking about this BTO. So what's yeah, that? Yeah, it's gaining popularity among like young couples right now because typically with BTOs, you have to wait for about three to four years before you get your keys. So in the meantime, you can actually save up for your marriage plans and then you start to pay off all your study loans as well. So timing-wise, it's perfect for us. From an investor's point of view, that's like a op four-year option on the market, which is brilliant. Yeah. But I can't, do, I can't take advantage, right? It's only for Singaporeans. Ah, you see. Yeah. See, I think the Singapore government's been very smart there. You know, they, they're still allowing people to get into the market that otherwise couldn't get in, which is, I think, you know, I think the Hong Kong government and the region, they should look at that in other markets around Asia because, you know, the Singapore government is still trying to get home ownership moving all the time, yes. which is very rare. I mean, in places, like, as I say, in China, Hong Kong, it's, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah. So go on, how much, what did you pay for your uh, place? We booked a four-room flat at Pongo area. Cost us about just over 290,000. Right, 290,000. So we're talking something in the region of probably sterling about 130,000 pounds, maybe 180, 200,000 US dollars. So how much you have to put down? Um, it's a 10% deposit. Okay. Yeah, and then you get HDB loan as well. So, it, but you can only sell it off after five years. Okay. But by which time it should fetch us a good price. But again, you see, that's that's very smart by the Singapore government. They're not letting you speculate and take advantage of the system, right? That's right, yeah. And is it popular? I mean, a lot of people doing this? Yeah, a lot of young couples do it now. So that's a great scheme. So you reckon four years. Will you move into it? Yeah, or... yeah, of course. So there you go, that's Singapore for you. And what I love about Asia is that people actually want to own their own properties, even when it becomes almost unaffordable, the government's stepping in and helping them to get in the market. They're not looking for council houses, they're not looking to rent, they're actually looking to try and get into the market, even on a four-year option. I think Pam's been very smart here, because in four years' time, as sure as eggs is eggs, her 250,000 single will be worth a great deal more. And she'll also get a property for herself as well to live in with her future husband. Yep, Has he hopefully. proposed yet? Not yet, but soon, I hope. And we go and find it. <laughs> this one's even smaller. No, I'm only joking. This is a real symbol of Singapore, and that's what I love about this place. It's so resilient, it is truly resilient. These people really knuckle down when the going gets tough. It's an incredible market. One of the great Asian concepts is feng shui, an ancient Chinese system that's believed to help one's life by the way buildings are built and utilised. The idea is to get good qi, or energy, and it's prevalent in places like Hong Kong and Singapore. 
To find out more, I talked to a local feng shui master. Hi, Hi Vivian, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Welcome Great to, to my you. house. Thank you. Yeah. Well, look, I'm guessing the builder didn't mess this up. But these, the gate and the door are both on the same angle, right? Is that on purpose? Yes, it is on feng shui purpose. I'm okay. the builder of the house. Okay. I'm a feng shui master. I align this whole house according to the feng shui principle. Okay. So in feng shui, first we look at the external form. When I was building this house, this house is actually facing northwest. So for me and my husband, we are better in facing a north house. So this building has been all aligned to facing north. And for the external form here, look at that, Tim. We have a, a little table mountain, man-made table mountain. So this is actually embracing the whole property area here. So the door, the gate has all been aligned to a perfect uh, degree. Is this a feng shui for your particular sign, birth yeah. sign, or is it dependent upon if yeah. someone else lived here, would they want a different angle? No, but this house itself, the most important is external form, what we have to bring into the internal. Right. And this door has been located in north. So when we have houses like door located on north, Southeast, southwest, and east is perfect. So this is the north sector where we're in, okay. north location and north facing. And then you've got the fish outside. That's all yes, part of the same. Yes, the thing. fish is also located in the north sector because right. we want to see water at the north. So I have a very good uh, flying star energy, which is an eight eight. So I have the koi pot over there. So let's keep it simple then. Yes. For people that are watching this yes. and are thinking about buying investment properties yes. in Asia, yes. they don't know about feng shui. Sure, yes. So what should they be looking at when they're buying just simple, cheap apartments in Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong? Yes. What direction should it be? What are the key things they should know? Well, the key thing is the environment outside first. It's first always environment first, then to the interior feng shui. So you must have the external feature, then you can pull in like the energy. What so give okay, me, you yeah. can look at the road, where road is supposed to be. The incoming chi, you know, every time when you look at a place, if you look at mountains, if no mountains, you look at hill. If no hill, we can always look at the topographic of the land. And then whether there's a dragon, when you call it a, 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 a mountain, there's a dragon, it will stop at the boundary of water. So the chi collection area, where the right. incoming area, you can have a curves so, or road coming in, right, okay. or water feature external. You can look at pond, you can look at uh, swimming pools. Right, have you got all that? <laughs> it's quite a lot to remember. So don't have roads coming into you. You can be on a junction or a roundabout, no problem. Try and be looking at mountains, try and be looking at sea. Don't want to look at old fire stations or redundant buildings. You know, sounds pretty simple to me. But these are some of the things that you should be looking at if you're buying Asian property. When Buying Asia returns, I'll take a close look at some viable properties in Singapore and show you inside my new home. What I love about these apartments though, in Singapore developers, is the quality is fantastic. As we've established, Singapore is currently vibrant, convenient and westernised. But before we take a closer look at potential properties to invest in, let's check in to see how the commercial real estate market is doing here. I'm here with Chichi Tio, who's going to talk to me about industrial and commercial property. Everyone here is talking about residential. Is there value still in commercial? Yes, there is. There is still value in commercial. In fact, a lot of people do not know that uh, in the natural and commercial properties, the rental yield is very much higher than residential yield. Okay. Yeah, because basically a lot of people, their knowledge is in residential. Uh, they do not know what is the use for industrial. So a lot of people, they not invest. Yeah. Yeah. But so industrial and commercial yields higher. Tell me, commercial yield roughly, what do I get? Okay, uh, basically uh, industrial and commercial yields, we are looking at uh, minimum 8% and above. Wow. Yeah. For both or which is better? Uh, industrial is better. Okay. Okay, the reason why I said industrial is better because the quantum is small. Yeah. Yeah, because there are strata units whereby the quantum is very small. What about any restrictions on foreigners? No, no restriction on foreigners. Okay. It's just that the only the only thing is for industrial commercial property you have to pay GST. Okay. What's yeah. it, how much is GST? Seven percent right now. Oh. Yes. So a little bit taxy. Seven percent GST. Correct. But the thing is, if you are always uh, investing, there are a lot of investors they actually incorporate a company. Okay. Yeah. So it's cheaper to do it that way. Yes. Okay, finally, on the commercial side, because some people don't like buying industrial, they yield or not, they kind of see it as a non-sexy asset. So on the commercial side, 
you know, where can we buy a, a reasonable cost of getting in? You know, lots of people watching this, you know, aren't going to be spending millions of dollars. They're going to be spending spending thousands of dollars. So, mm. any, any advice to us on where we can get cheap commercial with good yields? Those with high yields would be those with uh, good, let's say, if it's shops, it'd be good. Uh, those with good front page. Yeah. If it's officers, it'd be those near to MRT station. Back in 2004, I bought an apartment in the Icon building, very close to Singapore's business district. Welcome to Tim's place in Singapore. My brief to the agent was prime, but not super prime. And I also said I wanted a two bedroom unit. But what really sold me on this place was the fact that it's a loft apartment, which is very rare in Singapore. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by loft apartment. Now I'm not one to gloat, but I paid about 900,000 Sing dollars for this place. And it's probably worth 1.8, 1.9 million now, so I'm absolutely delighted. What I love about these apartments though, and Singapore developers, is the quality is fantastic. It's about four years since they completed this, and okay, I probably need to paint the walls a little bit, but the quality is absolutely wonderful. Lovely high ceilings, as you can see, and I just, I'm really, really proud of this place. When I bought this, there are very few duplex apartments on the market. I think people instinctively like to come upstairs to bed. I'm getting about $6,000 a month on this, so the yield is about 3.5%. But it's only costing me 0.95% in mortgage interest payments, so it's not a bad deal. The only downside of this place is the bloke who's renting it off me supports West Ham. Now it's time to look at some more property in this vibrant city. I'm looking for convenience, comfort and good value as a potential second investment. Fortunately, Singapore seems to have all of that. Thanks, Andy. So what size is this? This would be a 1066 square feet. It's a two-bedroom with a study. Okay. Right. And give me one compelling reason why I should buy this unit. Um, a few reasons, actually. Uh, one would be the proximity to the MRT, which is the public transport. Yeah. Uh, two would be the unblocked city view, which you can okay. see from here, and also the quietness of this area is very, very quiet. You okay. don't feel like you're. So there must be a downside. There's always a downside. So you know what's stopping people buying this? The one downside that I can see is actually the hospital. Uh, some buyers are fearful of uh, the possibility of another pandemic or something like SARS coming along so okay. it might have some impact on the pricing here. Okay. Some buyers are actually the most superstitious one actually are fearful because of it might means back for Sui. That's what I'm sure. Yes. Okay. Fine. So it's a city fringe apartment. You can buy one to four bedrooms. Price is about half the price of Orchard Road. About 20% cheaper than my unit in Icon. So very yeah, interesting investment. It's hot, it's cool, it's la vie. It's pretty expensive as well. It's about three minutes from Orchard Road. It's not built yet, but the best thing about this investment is you put 20% down and nothing until it's built. The government's recently stopped deferred payment schemes because they're trying to cool the market down. So they have to make progressive payments all the way through. So it does make for an interesting investment. Next, it was out to the island of Sentosa, known as Asia's favorite playground and home to a new integrated casino resort, theme park, and some of the priciest real estate in Asia. So where are we, Peter? So this is Sentosa Cove, a uh, very exclusive uh, residential area in okay. the isle, uh, resort island of Sentosa. Okay. Yeah. okay. We, are, and we are meeting uh, Chris, the queen of bungalows in Sentosa. You're the queen of bungalows? Yes, I am. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice Do I have to, meet to sort of you. bow or something? <laughs> Not at all. Hi, Hi nice hey. to meet you. Fantastic. All right, let's have a look. Look at this. Beautiful. Oh, you can see the lounge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's the size of this? 9,000 square feet. Yes. All right, that's big. Yes, it is. And the built-up is almost one-to-one -one as well. So it's about 9,000 square feet as well. Okay. So it's a good, good built-up. And how many bedrooms has it got? Oh, we're talking about five plus one. So, yeah, it's relatively big for its wow. size. Yeah. Incredible. So talk me through it then. So landed property in Sentosa, foreigners can actually buy it because in the whole of Singapore, foreigners can only buy apartments, right? They yes. can't buy landed property, but here they can, right? Yes, but yes, it's right. expensive. It is very expensive. Okay. Um, currently, only mainland locals can buy to mainland land. 
Yeah. So foreigners, they can only buy into Sentosa. Okay, so just here, like foreigners so, can buy. So yes. many foreigners are owning these things? Oh yes, about 60% right now. Really? Yeah, in the beginning, maybe from year 07, uh, lots of it are uh, owned by Singaporeans. Okay. But nowadays, a lot of uh, Chinese people are coming in, yes, Indonesians okay. as well as uh, local foreigners are coming in, yes. So where are we? We're in the south coast. And it's a largely uh, undeveloped uh, coast of Sentosa. Okay. So I'd like you to meet uh, the owner and my friend, Dr. Go. Hey, good team. to meet you. Nice good to, to meet you. you. Dr. Go, new boat, new house. Wow, yes, of course. I'm not going to get sick in Singapore, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so you just bought this recently? Yes, a couple of months back. And you're, this is an investment or are you going to live oh, here? Oh, no, 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 it's, it's a lifestyle. Okay. I need to live here and enjoy the life here. And you're going to still work or are you giving it? Is this no, no, this, this is such that I can work harder. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The life of the rich and famous in Sentosa. One day we'll be there. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> So when did they start the construction? When did the owner buy it? Right, uh, the owner bought it about nearly three years ago. Okay. And uh, she bought it for uh, nine million. Nine million. Yes. Okay. And what's it worth now? Thirty million. Wow. wow. <laughs> so is she going to live here or is she going to sell it? She's going to sell it most probably, uh, and after renovation. So she's going to do some finishing and um, do some feature walls. Well, look, I think the view is absolutely amazing, but for a property of that kind of money, you want the renovations to do a real job because I think the fit out is pretty average for a property of that kind of money. That's right. Now, I went in the bathroom, the master bathroom. I reckon I'd have been about nine when I could have fitted in that bath. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you certainly can say there's a lot of variety when it comes to looking for property in Singapore. So, what have we learnt about Singapore? Next week on Buying Asia, I'm off to Japan to find out whether they're emerging from their long-term economic slump in Tokyo and I'll be exploring two new hidden gems in Hakuba and Niseko. This is Tim Murphy, signing off on Buying Asia, one brick at a time. So join me on the piece in Niseko to look at property investment from all sorts of different standpoints, from buying organic land and farming to buying a penthouse apartment right in the middle of Irafu village here.